Welcome to Category Management Knowledge Group's course preview on panel data. Consumer panel data, or household panel data, is one of the most powerful category management data sources that should be well understood by Catman, sales, and marketing professionals. It's a great source for getting information about the consumer, including demographics, interaction between retailers or product groupings, and purchase behavior. The full course will give you a comprehensive understanding of panel data, including how it's derived, the key outputs, and how to maximize the use of this great data source. Here are the overall learning objectives for this course. We'll only partially cover these objectives in this course preview. Let's get started. Household panel data is one of the primary data sources required to do category management work. It provides a clear picture of consumer behavior so that retailers, sales, and marketing professionals can continually adjust strategies to focus on the consumer dynamics that drive category and brand performance. While the general directions of changing consumer shopping behaviors continue to be self-evident, shifts in trip frequency, household penetration, and spending levels by class of trade are ongoing and particularly critical to strategic decisions for retailers and vendors alike. The principal data vendors for this data source are Nielsen and IRI, or other third-party data providers within the industry. Data collection for panel data is much different than retail measurement data. This is because the panel consists of shoppers living at home from many different demographic groups. First, they become members of the panel, either through being asked to participate or by requesting to participate. Next, they have to shop. Every single time they purchase anything that has a UPC code, they take it home and scan the UPC code for each item. This may include a package of gum they purchased at a gas station or a huge grocery shop that included 75 different items. This information is transmitted to the third-party data vendor, which ends up in a massive database that is then spun into many different data sources that are all derivatives of the panel data. This includes consumer purchase behavior, consumer demographics, and cross-brand interaction data, and that's just to name a few. And each of these different iterations is for sale to vendors and retailers. There are other ways to collect panel data. Consumer panels that are mailed in, mail surveys, internet surveys are some examples. Different geographies and different industries will have access to different consumer panel data providers. Each household in the HomeScan panel provides detailed information about their household, including age and sex of primary and secondary shopper, household income range, size, composition, presence, and age of children, marital status, type of residence, race, male and female heads of household, also report age range, birth date, hours employed, education, and occupation. There are also many details about their specific shopping trips and purchases, including purchase date, retail store, use of loyalty cards, item UPC and product descriptions, number of units purchased and price paid, coupons used, total shopping trip dollars spent, and the method of payment. It's important to understand how consumer panel data differs from retail measurement data. Retail measurement data records millions of shopping households, while consumer panel data records shopping behavior of a limited number of shopping households that's projected up to a total market. Retail measurement data is limited to a retail store set. Sometimes, not all retailers are included in the retail measurement data. Consumer panel data includes all retailers, including those from alternate channels. There tend to be more product exclusions in consumer panel data. This is because any purchases made by businesses, clubs, or groups that shop in retail are missed in consumer panel data. Also, some categories and items may not be recorded due to instant consumables, 
in-transit purchases, or sensitive or embarrassing products that they choose not to record. Finally, there's a difference in promotional measurement. Retail measurement data reflects different promotional vehicles at a retail outlet, while consumer panel data includes vendor coupons and promotion is only captured based on perceived deals that consumers received while shopping. Retail measurement data is the most accurate source for volume and share information but it doesn't give a consumer perspective as to what drove the sales. Panel data is diagnostic in nature. It helps identify how consumers behave and in turn how that affects the volume results that are evident in the retail measurement data. The opportunity is to integrate these data sources to provide retailers and vendors with a complete picture of what's happening within their stores, categories and brands. It gives insights into the impact of marketing initiatives on consumers' attitudes, behavior, and sales. Consumer panel data allows for development of powerful insights and actionable recommendations on the business issues that need to be addressed. The most common types of analysis that can be done with household panel data can be classified in four main categories. Understanding basic purchase behavior through market summary reports, purchase dynamics, and deal measures. Identifying key target groups through demographics and purchase behavior. Evaluating new product introductions through trial and repeat and source of volume analysis. There are other diagnostics available, including combination purchasing, new or lost and retained buyer flow analysis, shopping expenditures, and market structure and segmentation studies. Panel data is used to answer questions about what happened in the household, including who are the buyers, how often they buy, where they shop, who are the heavy buyers, their loyalty to specific brands and retailers, and how they respond to promotional efforts. By buyers, we mean consumers, shoppers, or households. Consumer panel data can provide different perspectives about the consumer. There are many consumer purchase behavior measures available in panel data, which give insights into how the consumer shops the category. There's information available on brand interaction. This helps to understand where leakage is coming from and what competitive brands are stealing volume. Retailer interaction data is available as well, which helps to understand leakage, but across retailers and channels. This is available at a corporate or category level. And finally, demographic information is available by category or with a corporate look. Based on the breadth and depth of information available in consumer panel data, there are many different uses for the data, including category management analytics, strategic planning, new product introductions, media planning, promotional planning, and fact-based selling. Consumer panel data can often provide the breakthrough insights that retailers and vendors are looking for. Each of these consumer panel examples offer different views and perspectives of the consumer and are available through different services, tools, and reports from third-party data companies. Some of the offerings are standard, while others are custom purchases. Different geographies, retailers, products, categories, brands, segments, and measures are available. Before we start to understand the consumer panel data, we need to confirm how to build sales. There are two ways to increase sales when looking at consumer panel data. The first way is to increase the number of buyers purchasing the category or shopping at the outlet. With more households buying, also known as penetration, there's an opportunity to increase sales. The second way is to increase the amount that current buyers are spending. How do you get buyers to buy more? In net, the total number of buyers multiplied by the dollars spent per buyer equals total sales. This should better explain how these consumer measures impact dollar sales. 
If volume is up or down, it's driven by either the number of buyers increasing or decreasing, which is also known as penetration, or it's driven by buyers spending more or less dollars, or average dollars per household. Or, it's driven by a combination of both of these data measures shifting. The next set of consumer behavior measures give insights into what drives consumer behavior, which ultimately affects sales. This includes measures like repeat purchases, purchase cycle, loyalty, and perceived deals. Because panel data is not proprietary and can be purchased by retailers and shared by vendors, it's a great resource to get consumer insights. This data is key to give a retailer perspective, a vendor perspective, and a competitive perspective about the consumer across many different views of the data. To truly understand who the consumer is from a holistic perspective, this data source is also one that allows for collaborative efforts between retailers and vendors, as vendors tend to have access to more robust panel data sets than retailers do. We've now given you a preview of our certified course on Building Data Competency, Panel Data. If you have access to panel data, you should take this course to learn how to derive insights from this powerful data source. There are many options for you to choose from if you're interested in purchasing this course. The online course is available for purchase through Our House, which is Category Management Knowledge Group's state-of-the-art online training center. If you'd prefer, we can also run a private webinar for up to 200 people for a cost of $3,000, or a live session at a national or team meeting. Or if you're from a larger organization where many people would want to access the course, we can also make the course available for your use within your own internal learning management system. Your choices are limitless. Return on investment of your data purchase is paramount. For the millions of dollars some organizations spend on data, you want to know that the data is being optimized and maximized. Purchasing data gives your organization facts and data, but you shouldn't allocate your whole budget to data. By adding in software and reporting tools, you're providing them with information. Usually this requires additional budget dollars to pay for the software and tools. For many organizations, the data and software comes with training, and unfortunately many believe that training is enough to develop skills to properly use data, but it's not. You need to provide applicational training that will help your organization move from data to insights, and teach them how to then turn those insights into action. Not only category management needs to have these skills. Sales, marketing, space management, and other departments require these analytic skills to make more strategic and fact-based decisions in their roles. And to move to breakthrough insights, the right analysis at a much deeper level needs to be done. This is where the specialists do their work where category management and shopper marketing can complete the in-depth analysis to find those breakthroughs. You need to set aside part of your data budget to pay for the corresponding applicational training to increase capability on your team and in your organization ongoing. This will help you to increase data return on investment and more importantly move your organization to a more strategic and fact-based approach. At Category Management Knowledge Group, we can work with you to create solutions that will help you move your organization to a more strategic, fact-based place with increased return on investment for data purchased. So where do you go from here? If you're interested in purchasing the certified course, or working with us to help you determine multifunctional training opportunities for your organization, that will ultimately lead to increased return on your data investment, please contact us. We don't believe in a one-size-fits-all approach and will consult with you to ensure that what we deliver meets your specific needs and business issues. We hope to hear from you soon. Have an excellent day.